Now, despite there being a correction in the last few months with things trending down, Rolex sports models in the last few years have absolutely exploded in value and popularity. And as popular and iconic as the GMT Master 2s are, the Daytonas are, I would argue that there are much more interesting and unique pieces out there that you can have for around the same money, if not less. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is looking at some popular Rolex models and coming up with some different alternatives. If you're somebody that wants to express just kind of more of that individuality, want to maybe go against the popularity of some of the Rolex models and want to see what you can get for the, around the same money, this is the video for you. This is not intended to be a video where you look at the Submariner, you're going to try to find something that will emulate the Submariner in the dive watch category. Really what I'm looking at here is looking at the price category, what else is available to you and trying to highlight some unique offerings for around the same money, if not less. Most of these are going to be dictated by the retail price, but for some of these, as you know, uh, this trading value price is also going to be something we might reference in certain scenarios. And really what I'm looking for here is just something special, whether it's finishing, a novel display format or complication that allows it to be a little bit more unique. And also before we jump into this video, if you do want more in the world of affordability and you wanna look at some great watch brands out there, we have a comprehensive guide looking at 10 great affordable watch brands that should be on your radar. What we do in that article, it'll be down in the description below is talk a little bit of backstory, talk about some of the key pillars in the collection and also give some recommendations on maybe a place to start uh, if you want to kind of go down this rabbit hole with this brand. So we'll have a link to that in the description down below uh, if you are interested in that as well. So now for our first watch here, we have the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, the one Two four three hundred. Now these are at $6,400 for retail price. We'll trade above that. And so to start us off with this, I am now going to be looking at really unique kind of complications or ways of telling time that you can get for significantly less than the Oyster Perpetual. And honestly, there's a wide array of options that you can mention here. I probably could make a list of probably 10 to 15 watches that would be reasonable, if not longer. Uh, but I wanna start with one first here that pulls from one of the greatest innovations of the 20th century in timekeeping with the Accutron Space View. Now this is a out there piece. In 2020, Accutron split from its parent company, Bulova, to become its own brand largely built upon a novel and futuristic display format powered by an intriguing caliber using electrostatic technology. Now in the lower half of the skeletonized dial, you will find two gold and silver colored wheel-like apertures that spin. These are called electrostatic generators that convert your everyday movement into energy. That energy is then transmitted to an electrostatic combine motor, which is then located within the aperture at 10. And this motor will power the hands and give the second hand a very fluid sweeping motion. However, it is even smart enough to preserve energy when not in use, utilizing a power saving mode where the hands will stop to avoid any use of energy. In addition, Accutron has clearly continued the focus on accuracy as these movements are around plus or minus five seconds a month. For context, the spring drive is quoted at plus or minus one second a day. Certainly out there in terms of its design, but the finishing is also great across the entire watch as you're seeing some of these close-ups and the way of telling the time is truly unique for the price category. You're talking about half of the retail price of an Oyster Perpetual if you want something different. Although of course, very different than the Oyster Perpetual. That's the whole theme here as we continue. And moving on that theme, we have a brand that I recently was able to spend some more time with when I was shopping around in New York City. And that is a brand called Reservoir, an intriguing independent brand launched in 2015, offering a visual display that's very unique and inspired by gauges on vintage automobiles and even diving equipment. Featuring the very rare appearance of both a retrograde minute hand, jump hour for the digital display at six, and a power reserve indicator just below. Now Reservoir is creating this functionality with a proprietary module used in collaboration with Eta Calibers, a major aspect of what is making these watches more attainable. But still, $4,000 is in a nice range, I would think, for somebody that wants something different and is pretty much unlike anything else out there and surprisingly legible once you get used to it. For fans of rare complications or vintage automobile aesthetics, I think Reservoir is a pretty interesting brand to check out. So now we go from unique displays of complication to crazy revolutionary oscillators. And this is Frederick Constant with their monolithic manufacturer. So this is a concept that was created in 2021. And really what makes this watch pretty interesting, now the design is not gonna be for everybody, but this oscillator is beating at a frequency of 40 hertz. For context, the traditional oscillation of say, let's just say Rolex is four hertz. So that's eight beats a second. This is going 10x beyond what the traditional oscillator is going to produce from a Swiss watch making perspective. And for further context, that equals 80 beats per second for this oscillator. That isn't just fast, it is blistering fast. And to even give further understanding of how fast this is, 
the average blink of an eye speed lasts about one third of a second. So how this oscillator works is through a disc with flexible levers or teeth that engage with the rotating wheel through the flexing of an entire plate. Given the incredibly high rate, the seconds hand makes 80 tiny jumps per second, giving the impression of an incredibly smooth sweep while maintaining an impressive power reserve of 80 hours. Now moving up to our next tier in the Rolex collection, we have the Rolex Submariner Date. So what could you get for around the same price as this watch? First, we're going to look at a French brand with Trilo, specifically with their Nuit Fantastique. Founded as recently as 2018 in Paris, France, Trilobe is an entire company based on a special display format with their inventive rotating concentric disc to display the time. Along with the unconventional display format, all of Trilobe's current models utilize equally novel calibers. Specifically here, the 4 Hz X-Centric produced by Le Circle des Horlogers, a Swiss boutique movement provider that also works with high horology mainstays. The Nuit Fantastique is the brand's standard and most attainable design format with a well-finished titanium or gold case, which is also available in either 38.5 millimeters or 40.5 millimeter case sizes with starting prices at a very reasonable $8,800 given the novel concept. And when you do see the seconds on a disc type of format for the first time, this is something that you typically will look at for the high horology manufacturers. So to see this under $10,000 from a small upstart brand, pretty unique. And I think does send a message to somebody else in the room if you didn't want to have something off the beaten path. To follow here we have the brand that created the movement that was housed within the Daytona for over a decade with Zenith. But in this instance, we have something a little bit crazier than your conventional El Primero, the DeFi El Primero 21. Now, dating back to 2017, the DeFi 21 acted as the relaunch of the DeFi collection in the 21st century with a skeletonized dial and movement offering a few distinctive touches related to Zenith's class leading history with chronograph calibers. Now, the El Primero 9004 seen in this watch offers two separate escapements, both running at high frequencies, very different. Now, again, comparing the Swiss standard of 4 hertz, 28,000. 800 vibrations per hour with the escapements here, one's beating at five hertz or 36,000 vibrations per hour, standard for the El Primero. But the other one is beating away at a staggering 360,000 vibrations per hour or 50 hertz. The incredible high frequency of this caliber is astounding, not only because you see it in action on the dial with the lightning rotation through the 100th of a second chronograph counter, but further because of its accuracy in determining the elapsed chronograph time to such a precise degree. In addition, the caliber and watch as a whole are nicely finished, allowing this DeFi 21 to be a modern chronograph worthy of Zenith's history as one of the first automatic chronograph producers in 1969. And considering that this watch is less than the retail price of a Daytona, I think gives further context to how crazy this thing is. And speaking of the Daytona, let's actually talk about the Daytona now. I think it's important to talk about the market price and the retail price. Of course, many things are going to fall under the market price, but we'll kind of look at this in two sides. Now, to begin here, we have a watch that basically lines up pretty evenly with the retail price of the Daytona, and that's from the brand Resins. Now, do I imagine anybody that's going to be looking for the Daytona is going to naturally look at the Resins? Uh, probably not, but it does go to show the unique just creativity that is being done in a similar price range. Belgian-based brand Resins is known really for their avant-garde oil-filled watches. And on the channel in the past, we've actually done a complete video on a watch of that type. We'll have a link in the description down below. The Type 8 here though is their entry-level model that is not oil-filled, but still leans into the brand's unusual domed approach with rotating discs for the hour and minutes. And in addition, the 8C is also smaller than previous options from the brand, coming in at under 43 millimeters in diameter for its grade five titanium case and svelte 11 millimeters in thickness. The watch utilizes a highly modified ETA 2892 with a modular system that Resins calls the ROCS8 to power the display and case back system where you turn in one direction to wind the watch in the other direction to set. Naturally, this is the kind of timepiece that was never meant to be for everybody, but for those that do have interest in expressing their idiosyncratic quirks, it serves as a very suitable choice for those looking to make a statement about what they like. While JLC is probably better known for their icon, the Reverso, the Mariner Memovox is an attractive dive watch with an interesting complication in the form of an audible alarm function used for timing dives. Originally released in 1968, the Polaris Memovox has long served as an intriguing alternative to more mainstream diving options like the Rolex Mariner or Omega Seamaster. Like all JLCs, the Memovox is beautifully executed and allows for a full view of the movement and alarm components. 
These are more expensive watches, even more so compared to some other JLCs. And anyone opting for something like this is certainly a serious collector who doesn't need the hyped watch to get attention, but instead lets the alarm do the talking. And now for our last here within the Rolex hierarchy that we're looking at here, we're going to look at those precious metal options. So maybe like a Rolex Submariner date uh, in yellow gold, which is going to have a retail price around $39,000 and a market price close to that as well. So what could you get from other manufacturers for around that price or less? Uh, I'm gonna be looking at something that's almost half the price of that, just to give a sense of scale for what you could find. And that is from a brand that is known for doing some very daring things with UN, Ulysse Nardin. Now, when the original UN Freak was released in 2001, the watch made waves for a few reasons. One being its pioneering use of silicon as a material for certain escapement components, the gear train and the escapement being part of the hands, yes, the hands, and the approach of engaging the movement given the absence of a crown. The watch we have here, the Freak X, takes on the concept of having the gear train and balance all on the minute hand, but instead adds the conventional utility of a crown. Yet it's not to get twisted here. This watch is far from the conventional, all down to the material chosen with it being a titanium case, housed within a carbon fiber outer shell in this instance. The overall fact is still stunning, with essentially the entire skeletonized movement rotating around the dial. So in other words, a marriage of 21st century watchmaking while also serving as a reminder of the 177 years of proven horological history from this brand. And speaking of history, we have a watch from a brand that is arguably unparalleled in its contributions to early watchmaking in the 18th and 19th century with Breguet. Now, Breguet is known for countless innovations and creations in the world of watchmaking, most famously being known for the patenting of the Tourbillon in 1801, but that is just scratching the surface. As their namesake founder, Abraham Louis Breguet was an innovator in many aspects, the perpetually winding mechanism, the creator of the overcoil hairspring, the parachute shock system, as well as several other firsts. Embodying the original ethos of classic watchmaking is the Tradition Collection, which emulates classic watchmaking and packages it within the confines of a wristwatch. Now, the Tradition 7097 is one of my personal favorite watches from Breguet's current collection, offering an intriguing blend of Breguet's finishing techniques with a dial, or lack thereof, I should say, that fully exposes the gear train over its anthracite bridges. Given Breguet's propensity to show off the art of guilloche, the smaller dial that denotes the hour and minutes is cut with a lathe with a retrograde jump back seconds display that builds in anticipation every minute before it jumps back to its starting position. Although it's not a design that I will say is going to be for every collector, the fact that this precious metal watch can be found for less than the price of a three hand gold Submariner demonstrates one of the true opportunities for maximizing your collection for those in the know and have deep enough pockets to of course do it. But all right guys, that is my video looking at some alternatives for different tiers of Rolex models. If you want to express yourself a little bit more and want to go off from the more safe options available to you in the world of watchmaking. Uh, if you like this style of video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. Also, I think there's plenty of opportunities to do more of this in the future. If you wanted us to revisit this concept at a later date, uh, that liking of this video will be a great indication that maybe you'd like to see it happen in the future. Also, definitely check out teddyballthestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to also create all this content on this channel is through selling watches on our store. So if you want to support the content, you're in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. We know you can buy a watch anywhere, uh, but we'd love to have you because it allows us to keep doing what we're doing here and bringing great content. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.